there's a time we'll call our own Living free in harmony and majesty Take me home, take me home Take me home, take me home Living in the wilderness has lots of pleasures to it Especially if you got a hankering for good eat, like fresh honey from the hive for your morning flapjacks, or your evening flapjacks, new ripe apples from the hill country, and there's enough juice in one bite to float a canoe. But I reckon my favorite is them blueberries. Mm -hmm. Just right for making my special weakness, blueberry pie. Adams had a mighty taste for it too, not to mention Ben. So, every year, when them wild blueberries was just busted with goodness, Adams would make the two-day trip to Berry Valley and load up with them, knowing that I'd be along to do the bacon when he got back. But in the wilderness, well, a lot of things can happen in two days. I know you're tired, man, but we still got a long way to go. All right, I guess we can take a little breather. <sighs> Calm your bones, Ben. Calm your bones. We gotta save these berries for Jack's special blueberry pie. First the berries go into the filling, and then the pies will be a filling you. Doesn't that sound like a dandy idea? Huh? Just quit messing with that pack. You scamped the weight anyway. <coughs> Listen, Ben. <coughs> That's a wolf. <coughs> Sounds like he's in trouble. Come on. <coughs> now there's a lesson for you, Ben. <coughs> Never go chasing nothing into a hollow log less than you know you can fit. Just take it easy. We'll get you out of there. I just gotta figure out the best way to do it. I'm gonna help you now, little fella. Just take it easy. Ben, come on, pull on that end. Come on, Ben. Hang on, little fella. Hang on. It's coming. <laughs> Come here. Come over here, little guy. Now don't go sticking your nose into no logs. I might not be around to help you next time. Yeah. Ben! Now what are you doing in there? You feeling all right? You sure been acting strangely. Let's go home. Too. But if Jack's home by nightfall, we'll be eating our full of blueberry pies, baked in that nice, tasty, flaky crust he makes. Hey, hello. Are you lost, little fella? Huh? You're shaking like a leaf. 
Yeah, you'll be all right. You can stay here till your mama comes looking for you. I'll leave the door open for you in case you might want to leave. Ben? <laughs> ben? <laughs> Let's go down to the stream and give our feet a nice treat and soak them in the cool water. Oh, this sure feels good, Ben. Ben, you don't know what you're missing. Ben, I never thought I'd see the day you didn't want to go in the water. You just don't know what you're missing. I sure wished I knew what was eating you. You ain't sick. Let's go inside. You gave me quite a scare when you came up, Jack, but it looks like you're gonna live. Well, no thanks to that thing. Tried to kill me. What thing? The thing. The thing. The monster. Are you sure you didn't see a frisky rabbit or something? Well, not unless a rabbit's as big as a young pine tree, uh, 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 with a long, green, shaggy fur, with eyes, purple eyes, big as pie plates. I've seen a rabbit like that once myself. With a long yellow tongue, long as a rifle barrel, and breathing fire? No, nope, but I know just how you feel. Happened to me once. It did? I tripped over my own two feet. <laughs> that nab you, Adams. You haven't believed a word I've said, have you? You gotta admit, you do stretch things at times, don't you, Jack? Where are you going? I'm going to unpack number seven and get to making pies. Why, you wouldn't believe there was a monster if he was to come right through this door here and, 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 and tear for you. <laughs> you know something, number seven? I'm a half a mind to not bake many pies at all. Just hightail it out of here. That's the thing, you know. But not that it uh, scared me. It just sort of took me by surprise, so. I'm glad you feel that way, because we're going to go find that thing. Find it? Are you crazy? I mean, why would you want to find something that you don't believe is there? Well, I don't believe your monster's out there, but there's probably something out there. Most likely a bull buffalo that strayed from the herd. Oh, buffalo! Don't you think I know a buffalo track when I see one? These tracks were like nothing I've ever seen before. I tell you, they were... They were unholy. Well, then I'm gonna go find some unholy tracks. I'm gonna go find me a monster. One with yellow eyes and purple tongue. It was purple eyes and a yeller. 
probably couldn't find them tracks anyway. Well, I'm going to do the best I can. It's got to be something natural. It's got to be a natural thing, you say? Can't be nothing else. You want to go? You want to go? <coughs> you scaredy cat. <coughs> Hold on, Adam. Hurry up. Now, in all my years out in the mountains, I never heard tell of no monsters running about. But I knowed for sure that what I saw was more than just an ugly buffalo. Call it what you will. But whatever it was, I didn't have no hankering to go looking for it. Of course, I couldn't let Adams know that. He was dependent on me to protect him in case he got in a tight spot. Now, it was right about in here. That thing come thundering out of the bushes at me. What's that? Listen. You're hearing things. Sure I am. So are you. You got purple eyes, Ben. Well, maybe that thing's eyes weren't exactly purple. It was probably more like blue with just a touch of devil fire in them. The precise color don't matter anyhow. What matters is, that thing was out there and we was walking thumb smack dab into its territory like a couple of dummies. You sure take a heap of convincing. You still believe there's something out here? I sure do. Hold it. There he is. Hey! Where are you? Come on back! Where in the heck did you get to? Is that your monster? Well, I can't see if his tongue's yeller. Adam, quit your funnin'. That fella's got the look of a lawman about him. You're still the wanted man and that reward looks mighty tempting. You don't look like no lawman to me. See that light flashing on his chest every once in a while? That could be a bad. Let's you and me head for the high country and lay low for a while, just in case. You still afraid of that made-up monster? Well, I ain't. And you can figure in that made-up sheriff, too. <laughs> I never thought I'd run into anybody that's stubborn or number seven. Stubborn? You call me stubborn? We go out looking for some monster, and what do we find? We find a bird in a tree. Ben comes out of the bushes. We see some man waving a stick and yelling something. Yelling at something that ain't even there. And he can call me stubborn without even flinching. Shut up, Jeepy Cat. I'm glad to see you, Nakoma. Now I can talk to somebody sensible. This old codger here's a funnin' with me. Because I won't swallow his tall tale about some monster in the forest. <clears throat> well, go ahead and tell him, Nakoma. Tell him his mind's racing quicker than a twig going over a waterfall. Tell him there ain't no monsters out there. Well, go ahead and tell him. I do. It's necessary, but then I don't. If it ain't necessary, then it ain't my fault if you can't tell the difference. Mad Jack says that there's a monster out there somewhere. 
Well, he's having hallucin. Mm -hmm. Hallucin. Mm -hmm. He's imagining it. But when the coma tells him that there's a monster out there, why, it's a gospel truth. You think for him I'm good natured. I'm still gonna bake them pies because I promised you and I promised Ben. Mm -hmm. And I promised me. Now, don't you two argue. There'll be enough for everybody. Jack, the coma just told me that Gray Wind thinks there's a monster in the forest and he's gone to track it and kill it. Well, that's a good idea. Now, I don't know anybody, white man or Indian, that's as good as Gray Wind when it comes to tracking and hunting in the woods. Well, I want to find him before he does. Why bother? Why not just let Grey Wind kill it? Because it ain't reasonable, that's why. He thinks it's a devil beast. He figures it stole his grandfather's spirit because he heard the thing of Bellon when the old man died. The only way he can release his grandfather's spirit is to track it and kill it. Well, that sounds reasonable to me. I ain't gonna ask Nakoma to go because I got respects for his belief. I gotta find it and ease everybody's mind. I guess me and Ben are gonna have to go alone. Adams? Yeah? You're forgetting one thing. There's a lawman out there somewhere, and he's waiting for you. Jojawa. Diowa, Buck. Bale Wima. Well, thanks, Nakoma. Be glad to have you go along. Uh, uh, uh. Nakoma? Adams? Uh, uh, uh wait a minute. That thing, whatever it is, probably hightailed it for California. I hear tell out there they got a monster that Indians call a Sasquatch. It means wild man. Big hairy thing. Adam, you got. Had to be some heavy critter, Nakoma. How long ago? Feel it. Feel it, Just now. That means it was standing right here while we was over there in that clearing. It could be, well, it could be, uh, Adams, go out, wait for me. What'd he say? He said he just came through here. He said more than that. I heard him. He said that when it runs, it makes tracks like he's never seen them. Well, a bear could have done this. In order for a bear to do that, he'd have to be full growed. And a full growed bear would have left claw marks. And there ain't none. Then we're just going to go find out what did do it. The deeper we got into the woods, the more spooked I become. Suppose it was just as well that we didn't know that stranger was also poking around out there. It would have made me as jumpy as a fly on a horse's ear. I was dead sure that fellow was a lawman, or worse yet, a bounty hunter. And for Adams, that spells more trouble than any monster. Adam, there's your prince. They look like they're fresh ones. Now, if you uh, want my advice, Adam, uh, we'll go back to the cabin and wait for it to show up there. That is, if it ever does. Jack, I'm telling you, there ain't no monster out here. Well, of course. There's no weird monster. The birds are jumping out of their feathers. Three-toed traps from no critter that's ever been in these parts. 
and a banshee howl and, and branches broke off of trees with no claw marks? Yeah. Of course there's no monster. And I know there's got to be a reasonable answer for it. <laughs> I just can't wait to hear it. Now that weren't the wind whistling through the trees. The coma stay with Ben and Jack. I'm going on up ahead. Well, let's stop. Well, there's no sense in my staying back here alone. Or it's safe. All right. Whatever you are, I'm coming in to meet you. I mean you no harm. Now, if you got any ideas about her, I'd be much obliged if you'd forget him. I'm a friend. Adam? Jack? The coma? Jack, there's your monster. It's a camel. Look at that swelling on its back. Looks like it swallowed a tent. It's just another animal. Comes from Africa. Well, how did it get here? Walk? No. There's an ocean between here and Africa. Swim? No, it didn't swim. Somebody had to bring it over here. See, it's got a bridle on. <coughs> Come on, let's catch it before Grey Wind does. Uh, about catching it, Adams. My, uh... My, uh, lumbago's been acting up. What do you mean, your lumbago? Yeah, yeah, you know, all this tracking and running. All right, you stay right there. If he turns around, I want you to spook him back this way. Spook him back. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. No reason to be scared, big fella. Nakoma, stay on that side of him. <laughs> nice and easy. Come on, now. We ain't gonna hurt you. Jack, get the halter. Yeah, the halter. Get the halter? That's easy to say. Nice, Camel. Easy, uh, easy. Nice, Camel. Say, hey, you're taller than you look. You got pretty eyes for a critter. I got her. I think. Well, why didn't you hold on to the halter? You want the halter, you hold on to it. Got that! I'm going this way. Drop that hat, you long-legged critter! Leave it be! What you doing now? Jack, grab it taller. Give me that. Now look what you did. You got my hat all soggy. There's nothing worse than a soggy hat. Hey, looks like your lumbago's feeling better. Well, a uh, little running always makes it feel better. Look what it did to my hat. <laughs> Hey, watch it, will you? I don't... <laughs> Adam! Looks like it wants to go with you, Jack. Not me. I got my hands full with number seven. <laughs> hey, Adam, look at here. Huh. U.S. Huh. Army. You suppose the Army's looking for you? I don't know, Jack. Huh. I don't know. <laughs> The critters around Adam's cabin went plumb loco when they seen that humpback monster. Why, they was even more scared than Adam's and Nakoma was when we first come on it out in the brush. It was just a good thing I was around to calm everybody down. Hey, number seven. Should have been there. Look what I captured. 
Hi, Charlie! Hi, Charlie! You beautiful, thank you! Hello, man, Adams. <laughs> Get inside. Hi, Charlie! Hi, Charlie! Oh, you all right, huh? Oh, gosh, I missed you. Where on earth have you been? Why, well, I've been a tromping all over the mountains looking for you. Yes, sir, I sure missed you, good gal. I sure did. Look at you. You okay? Oh, yeah, you're a sweet pal. Oh, that was a good kiss. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Charlie. I take it its name is Hi, Charlie. You know, I sure am grateful to you for finding Hi, Jolly for me. <laughs> I bet I chased that doggone critter all over these mountains in the last four days. How'd you happen to get a critter like that anyway? All the Army's been a using them down there in Arizona for crossing the desert. And the Army, being like the Army is, why they decided to quit using them. And so when they mustered her out, why, we left together. How long were you in the Army? Oh, I scouted for the Army for now on to 25 years. You know, Mr. Adams, I've been watching you and your bear. Would you like it if you lost him? And uh, you, Jack, in spite of all your caterwauling, would you want to be separated from uh, number seven there? Well, no. How'd you manage to lose High Jolly? Oh, we run into a mountain lion. I don't know which one of them critters was the most scared. But they took one look at each other and headed for the hills in different directions. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you look at that? Critters are only afraid of things that they don't know. Well, that raccoon knows that High Jolly ain't gonna hurt him. It's funny how animals take to one another. I seen Ben do it all the time. Well, I certainly do appreciate your hospitality, but me and High Jolly got to be a moving on pretty soon. Bye, Doc. She says I get chill out. What do you say? Well, he says uh, you can't leave yet. Too dangerous out there. You mean to tell me if some Indian went and seen your bear around his camp one night when one of his relatives was a dying, why he'd send somebody after him? No. The Indians believe that the bear's a healer, carry a powerful spirit. Now, see, nobody in these parts have ever seen a camel before. And he really believes that he's got to kill her to release his grandfather's spirit. Well, you got to find him. And you got to reason with him. Because if that doggone redskin harms one hair on that camel... First thing we got to do is hide her. We got to get her up in the brush somewhere. Me and the coma are gonna go look for Grey Wind. You stay here with High Jolly. Do you think Grey Wind will be coming around here? No, well, not with you two here, but you keep your eyes open. Come on, Nakoma. Don't you worry, High Jolly. We ain't gonna let nothing happen to you. You suppose they find Grey Wind for he, uh... I don't want to sound disappointed. But finding that Grey Wind is like trying to catch a puff of smoke in your fist. That Indian don't want to be caught. Ain't likely anybody's going to catch him. Gray Wind was a great hunter, all right. But Adams and Nakoma weren't so bad, neither. Now, they figured they'd backtrack on their own trail and come on him as he was a fallen. But after traveling quite a ways, they started to think that, well, maybe they was wrong. We found our trail all right. Why did he go off that way? Why didn't he follow it in? He knows where my cabin is. He's gone to circle around and come in from the other side. Come on, we got a long way to go. You know, I still think that we should have left her hid up there in them bushes, like Adam said. Well, High Jolly didn't like it up there in the brush, and if she don't want to stay there, I ain't going to make her. We got to do something with her. Wait a minute. What if we was to put her inside the cabin? I'm telling you, Jack, 
Camels don't cotton to being put inside of something. Well, we just can't leave her standing around outside here where Grey Wind can spot her. And sides, don't be telling me what critters like and don't like. I know about critters. I taught Adams everything he knows about them, and he knows a lot. Now, I say that I Jolly won't mind being in that cabin at all. Unless, of course, she uh, wants her own room. Now, uh, come on, Hi Jolly. You're going to like it in here. It ain't going to work. Now, come on, Hi Jolly. That's a good girl. You're going to like it in here. Now, come on. Now, wait. Well, well, now, wait a minute. Look, see, it's got a nice solid floor and a bed. Come on. Oh, come on, hi, Jolly. Listen to what Jack's to say. Well, uh, what? Don't talk to me like that. You're, you're, you're worse than number seven. Get her in jail. See, you can't even get the feel of the place till you get inside. Now, once more. <laughs> oh, come on, hi, Jolly. Quit batting them eyes at me. I ain't courting you. <laughs> Easy, governor number seven. Now, come on, hi, Jolly. Don't give us no more grief. Oh, oh. You like it in there. I can just give it a try. That's a good girl. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I told you hi, Jolly didn't like to be indoors. Well, I got to admit, there is a thing or two I don't know about Chris. Now what? Well, now we got to... I don't know what now. We got to figure something else. Well... I reckon I could shoot Grey Wind if he showed up around here. I hate killing, though. I hope that medal from the Army for sharpshooters. So that's what that is. Sharpshooting medal. We thought it was a badge. We had you figured for a lawman. Sharpshooter, eh? <laughs> Only at targets. I don't believe I could shoot at a man. You know... I'm somewhat of a sharpshooter myself. One time, I was leading this party of settlers up over South Pass. And I was riding along there, and this old rattlesnake stuck his head up over a log. And I just swung around on him and fired. Well, sir, after a bit, he stuck his head up again. I reloaded and fired again. Oh. Then he stuck his head up. He kept sticking his head up. And every time he'd stick it up, I'd fire. And those people, they, they all started laughing at me, saying I couldn't hit the side of a barn from inside with all the doors closed. Well, sir, I must have shot 50 balls in the pound of powder. After a while, he quit sticking his head up. I went around that log. You know what I found? found a whole wagon load of rattlesnakes with their heads shot off. That's the truth. <laughs> Jack, I've been watching him. That's Grey Wind. He's come after High Jolly. I gotta get her away from here. No, that's the worst thing you can do. He's just trying to spook you. I don't care. I'm going to get her out of here. Now, now, you just relax. Like I said, he's just trying to spook you. And like Adam said, he wouldn't come down here with the two of us around. Besides. They've probably talked to him already. Well, what if they ain't? Well... Adam. Oh, no. We're too late. Don't just stand there. Get me loose. Where's my hope? Well, who do you think did this? Number seven? Find hope's gone. 
He's not going to find no hope once I get my hands on him. Well, what happened? Gray Wind spooked him from up on the ridge. And when I wasn't looking, he threw a rope over me, tied me up, and took off with his camel. Not more than ten minutes ago. Well, he can't get far. We gotta find him before Gray Wind does. Come on, let's get a move on it. You mean you haven't talked to Gray Wind yet? Slow down, you two. I ain't as young as I wish I was. This dumb predicament was getting to be dumber than most. Every time I turned around, I had to go trailing after Adams and the coma to keep him out of trouble. And now I had to worry about Find Hope and his crazy camel. There's just no rest for an experienced mountain man. Quick, Sam. We gotta be more careful. We gotta keep moving. Come on. Mind your foot and high, Jolly. We get you stuck and it's all over for the both of us. Quiet! You want to get us both killed? Run, I Jolly! Run! Run! <laughs> oh, you never do nothing I want you to do. Gray Wind. Take it. Take a hold of that halter, Gray Wind. Let that camel save you. He's a friendly spirit. He'll save you, Gray Wind. Do it. Do it. Now that this is a friendly spirit, and it means you no harm. No, Grey Wind. Evil spirits don't save the lives of great warriors, so High Jolly can't be an evil spirit. How we, but fairy? No, Grey Wind. What did he say? He said that evil spirits often use trickery to save their own lives. No, run, Gail. Run, High Jolly. Ah! Run, High Jolly. Can't you see she's a friendly spirit, Grey Wind? She saved you. And even now she's doing you no harm. Shall I take him at him? Let him go, Jack. Grey Wind? You know the Great Bear Spirit wouldn't protect something that's evil. Now, that critter that's in there has got to have a good spirit, too. Huh. What's Gila be get?
Mr. Adams, what in the world? It's right nice the way critters take care of one another. Gray Wind? I know when we set our mind to doing something, we get blind to a lot of other things. I know you thought you were doing the right thing. I want you to go back to your people proud. I just darn near saved your life. Many moons from now, your children's children will be singing songs of you and how you eased their mind and proved that there was no devil beast. Tiwagawik. Adams? What if, uh, Gray Wind hadn't taken hold of that rope? Fog's around here only about four feet deep. He wasn't going to sink any further than he already had. That's just between you and me. <laughs> Come on, kid. Well, Pierce is how we're ready to go. Guess I better say goodbye. Hmm. Mr. Adams, I don't know how I'm ever going to thank you for all you've done for me. Finding High Jolly the way you did and then saving her life. Oh, now. That was Ben's doing, not mine. Well, yeah. Yeah, guess you're right. Guess you're right. That, that Ben, he's some kind of an animal now. He... Thank you, Ben. I thank you much. Hadn't been for the two of you, I... No telling what might have happened to High Jolly. Uh, you too, Jack. Uh, thanks. I, I'm sure sorry that I had to tie you up. Sorry? Oh, now, Jack. Well, you know, a fella gets kind of worked up at times. And he does some crazy things that, well, you know, uh, seems right at the time. And then later I'll on... I'll forget it. Well, thanks, Jack. See, uh, I think High Jolly's ready to go, you know. There's a lot of this old country that we ain't seen. Being in the Army, why, we ain't got a chance to see too much of it. Take it easy now. Bye, Mr. Feinholz. Bye to you too, hi, Jolly. <laughs> you know, I can't figure a man like that getting so attached to an animal. Kind of silly. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Jack. Nothing like you and Seven or, or me and Ben. Right, Ben? Love's a powerful thing. Jack, I want you to tell me the truth. Did that monster really have big purple eyes and a long yellow tongue? Don't want to talk about it. I got some berry pies to fix. <laughs> ben, I don't want you to be afraid of any monsters that ain't out there. It's the unknown that sometimes can be the scariest. But that's nothing to be ashamed of. But there's one thing you got to remember. I jolly wasn't wearing green fur or spitting fire. <laughs> Deep inside the forest is a door into another land Here is our life and home We are staying here forever in the beauty of this place all alone We keep on hoping, maybe there's a world Maybe there's a time we'll call our 